Hey guys, it's Jenny and I'm back with another video. This time I am showing you the results of um, some coffee dyed papers that I made and some of these involve using metal dyes. I don't know if I told you I had bought some metal dyes um, kind of strictly for the purpose of using them to try to um, make patterns on coffee dyed paper. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm definitely gonna cut them out and use them in other ways, but a couple of them I was like, you know what, I'm gonna see if these will work. So I just wanna show you, I did some more doilies. Oh, that one got stuck. Um, nothing new here. Of course, the top one turned out the best. Okay, so. We're gonna start off with them. Remember the little um, clock die that I had bought and I was so upset about the size because I really thought it was gonna be a lot bigger? Well, look, it did pretty good. So um, I dipped these, um, this is just regular copy paper, which I think I need to buy People are using something called presentation paper. I think it's a little bit thicker than copy paper and I, I, I wanna invest in some uh, whenever I can afford it because <laughs> I had never dunked my copy paper in um, a coffee bath before and so I did one side and then I turned it over and did the other side and when I picked it up, um, the first one tore, so you know I, I learned after that I've got to be really jealous and maybe not dip the whole entire piece of paper because I also had a spray bottle with uh, coffee in it as well. So I dipped this one in um, a coffee bath. I laid it down. It was a very hot Texas day. I laid it down on our cement back patio and then I laid the metal dye on top of it, and then I used the spray bottle and sprayed more just around the dye area. And so it, it turned out pretty good. Okay, so there's that one. On this one, I used a uh, oval dye, and the reason that I positioned it this way is because, you know, I envisioned turning, you know, the, the paper, or folding it in half, so I wanted it to come out that way. And that one turned out pretty good. So that's an oval die. This is kind of a, a leaf wreath die. It did okay. I mean, you can, it's a neat outline. So it turned out pretty good. Now this one <laughs> didn't. This was one of my uh, ice cream cones. I'll hold it up there and see if you can even make out an ice cream cone. So. I'm gonna have to um, like put the metal die on top of the paper, maybe ink a little bit, or try to outline it, or maybe just cover it up. But I don't think the ice cream cone turned out that well. I don't know that I would use it. I don't know, we'll see. Okay, and here's the dragonfly, and guys, I'm pretty pleased with it. Let me back it up a little. I think it's pretty cool. And then it was kind of interesting. Um, like I said, I just used coffee, but on certain parts of it, it turned like a really dark color. I, I don't know why that happened, but it's neat. But I, from, I mean, you look at that and I think you can definitely tell that's a dragonfly. Okay, and so that um, oval, die I showed you earlier. This is the larger. It's a nesting die set. So here is a larger oval. I thought it turned out really well. This is a butterfly, right? <laughs> like I can hear you guys, but I thought I'll oh, just show it up, put it up there and let them guess. But yeah, it's a butterfly. Turned out pretty good. Can you tell what that is? That's my lamp post die. I thought it did pretty good. Okay, now this, oh, I know, yeah. This was um, a doily. 
That's why this one is called inked because I sprayed it so many times. So I laid this doily uh, on top of paper. I didn't dunk this paper, you can tell, because it's still white in the middle. So I wasn't sure how it would come out. I mean, it, it's, it's okay. It's kind of cool. So that's using the doily. Now here we get into the use of my placemats. This one um, did not turn out very well. Okay, but look at this one. Guys, I'm so happy. I'm just upset because I can't reproduce it every single time. But by dunking the paper in the coffee bath and then laying the lace, uh, you know, the vinyl mm -hmm. lace plastic placemat on top of it and then spraying with a spray bottle, I did get that. And here's another part of the lace placemat. It's okay, it's fuzzy. I like this one. I think it turned out really well. I'm gonna leave them down so you can see better. I think that one turned out very well. This one, not so much. So see, I mean, I, I, I don't know. That one didn't turn out very well. This one's okay. I mean, it's okay. It's not perfect. And if you see splotches of pink, I was also doing some beet juice dyeing as well. So I thought it was kind of neat on some of the papers, the beet juice dripped and I didn't mind it. Now, um, I'm not sure what happened here other than I must have dropped, like when I went to lay another placemat down or, or lay another piece of paper down, it must have dripped onto here, which kind of ruined the design. Other than that, I mean, it would have been pretty nice, but then that big old splotch kind of ruined it. This one's another fuzzy one. Okay, and then these are um, beet juice. So, I made a beet juice bath. Oh, it's starting to rain. Um, so, beet juice. It's funny, this one still feels damp. Oh, and this one had a doily on top of it, but it's very, very faint. Um, these still feel wet. It's kind of weird. It gave it a different texture. It's like soft and it feels thicker, but it feels wet. I don't know. Mm, beet juice and coffee. And then um, <laughs> more of the, I think it's a placemat. Yeah, more of the placemat, beet juice and coffee. That's really cool. They feel wet, but I know they're not. But anyway, okay guys, um, my husband's probably gonna be coming back inside the house. I told him I wanted to make a couple of videos and asked him if he needed to do anything outside, but it's starting to rain. Um, so I just wanted to show you some papers that I've been dyeing with coffee and beet juice. I'm gonna see if I can show you one more thing real fast, okay. I ordered this off of Amazon. I found it on sale because I was looking at other book binding kits, but this one actually came with a, a zipper case. It's made out of fabric and it's quilted. It's a dusty rose color, but it's gonna hold everything together. And so this is the book binding kit that I bought and it has this um, dividers that I can Velcro in if I choose to do so. You know, I can divide this and then um, divide it further, you know. That's how they showed it on Amazon. I know I'm doing a terrible job of Velcroing it in there, but you, you, you get the idea. Okay, so it came with a case, and um, I haven't even opened it up. 
but it came with an all an all a thimble, which I don't know how to use that. Ooh. So it's a very sharp all. And then another sharp like needle tool. Like this is um this might be a leather kit. I'm trying to remember if it was a leather kit or a book binding. I think it's a leather kit. But I just need a really sharp awl. And I thought it and it came with all these needles, which I know I've seen in book binding kits. Same kind of needles. And then um, a cutting tool, measuring tape, these kind of uh, needles, which I don't know if I'll ever need them or use them. And then I got all these different types of thread, which is the case and the, all these different colors of thread is what really sold me on this particular kit. Now, Okay, the thread is not waxed, but if I want some waxed thread, I'll just buy the color that I want. But um, I'm pretty sure this is nice. I think it'll, it should work fine to sew in a signature. So, like I said, I like that it had all these different colors. Kind of sold me on it. And I was watching um, one video and she was saying that she did not like flat thread. Now, she was using a waxed thread that was round. And mine is round, but it's not waxed. Um, but she was saying she did not like flat thread. So, I was trying to make sure I didn't buy any flat thread. But anyway, just wanted to show you the kit that I bought. If anybody's interested in it, um, I'll provide the link. Um, the brand is Low Lodrid. L O here Lodrid. Okay, and I did buy it off of Amazon. Um, and I want to. I don't. I don't remember if it was like $15 or, or what, but it was around that price range. But anyway, like I said, I got all this thread. I got a nice sharp awl. I got the needles that people use, you know, to sew the thread in through the signatures. A unique kind of thimble, which I don't know how to use. I don't know. Anyway, okay guys, now I'll end the video. I don't want to keep you too long, but um, I want to send you love, prayers if you need them. Let me know. And um, crafty, crafty hugs from Texas, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.